Hi, it's Jan Howe. We are back in the sewing room and today we're making bow ties. This is a fun DIY project and I'm going to show you a simple streamlined sewing method that I think you're really going to like. Let's get started. <laughs> items and things that you'll need to make your bow ties is of course the pattern downloaded and printed and I'll have the link in the description below. You'll need just under a quarter yard of fabric so the whole width of that and this is on the fold. And you can use any woven fabric, any lightweight cotton woven fabric or even a blended fabric print. You also need a fusible interfacing, just a medium weight. You can buy this by the yard or you can also just buy it in little packs like this. Very inexpensive and a good thing to have actually. And we'll just be cutting two and a half inch strips of that. You will need a pair of paper scissors and fabric scissors, pins, and some kind of marking device. I really like this chalk pencil. You can interchange the different colors of chalk and it doesn't show through on the other side of the fabric. You could use a pencil, of course, if you don't have a light colored fabric. Otherwise, it, it might show through on the other side. A rotary cutter if you, is always nice to help you cut out that first initial cut. Not necessary, just a, a nice tool to have on hand and a turning, some kind of turning device. This is a dowel blunt end um, turning stick, which is great for turning tubes inside out. And you'll also need your iron and ironing board and of course your sewing machine. Using your paper scissors, let's cut out the pattern. Now I'm going to show you, this has to be pieced together. There are two pieces that need to be taped together, obviously because the paper is not long enough. But let me explain the pattern here. So there's an outside line that is the seam allowance. If you choose to just cut it out, then you're going to have to cut it out, cut out the fabric, and you'll have to cut out the interfacing. And I'm going to show you a streamlined method that you just need to cut it out once. And if you're going to do that, you're going to cut out on the inner line, the darker line, and then we're going to trace around the line and that will be your stitching line, which is really cool. So I'll explain it later, later. But so we're going to be cutting out on the inner line here, even though there is that outside seam allowance line. So we're going to cut out on that dark line. Now that you have the pieces cut out, Take either piece and fold down on that tape here line. Fold that over and then line it up with the tape here line on the other piece. And just apply a piece of tape. So we're, gonna, we're going to take our fabric and place it wrong side up. So the next thing we're going to do is apply the interfacing to the fabric. You'll want to place the fabric wrong side up and open it up all the way. And we'll only be applying the interfacing to half, And you'll be applying the interfacing just to the top half portion because what we're going to do is fold that in half and obviously you could have used less fabric but I like to get I like to just cut this much out then I know I have um, I'm not playing just so I know I have enough fabric so what we're going to do is just place that just centered down the middle it doesn't have to be exact but we're going to um, apply that so 
So the first thing we're going to do is iron on the fusible interfacing. The textured surface obviously is the one that you're going to place down on the fabric and then iron. We're going to fold that in half lengthwise, right sides together. If your interfacing piece that you're cutting from is long enough for the whole strip, that's great. If not, I'm using two strips of two and a half inch interfacing. And I'm just going to center that on top of that folded layer. And then I will place that down on the rest. And I'm just going to overlap that just a little bit. You really don't even have to overlap it if you don't want to. It's not that bulky. It's not that big of a deal. But I'm going to try to center that down that strip. And then I'll take it to the iron ironing board and press that. Your ironing board setting, you want to have that on the steam function and on the linen setting, linen or cotton, whatever your iron has. So let's take that to the ironing board and press that. So usually the technique is to cut this out, cut the fabric out, then cut one out of the interfacing, put them together. But this technique I'm going to show you, we're going to, we're not going to cut it out until after we sew. That is the beauty. That way we're only cutting out one time instead of three times. So what we're going to do is apply the pattern on top of the fabric and the interfacing that is folded in half. Leave a little bit of an end at the bottom. And I'm just going to put my scissors on top of that pattern just to help keep it in place as I trace. This will be the stitching line. This will tell us where we need to sew. We have the outline of that. And as you can see on the pattern, there's a no sew zone on one side of the, the neck line right here. I'm just going to mark that. So when I sew, I know, I'm, I know that I'm not going to sew this area. So flip it around, line up the end, and just sew it straight. Trace the other side. So you could use the pencil if you wanted to. If you have a really light colored fabric, I wouldn't use a pencil because it sometimes shows through on your seam line. So whatever preference, if you don't have a chalk pen, I'm just going to show you how you can use a pencil. Mark that. So this area right here, I'm not going to sew. We're going to start at the end of the no sew zone, backstitch, and sew all the way around at the sewing machine. So I have threaded my machine with the same color of thread as the fabric and I've set my fabric stitch to just a straight stitch and about a two and a half length. I'm going to back stitch at the beginning and the end leaving that gap open. Take your time especially going around the corners And around the corners, if you need to, take a stitch, lift up your fabric, and turn, turn the hand wheel to sew around those corners you can.
This is so much easier than trying to hold two small pieces together plus the interfacing and sewing on the seam allowance. You All you have to do is sew on that line. So we've sewn all the way around. I've left that gap. Now let's go cut it out. Grab your fabric scissors. And instead of, this is the beauty of it, instead of having to cut it out twice or three times, we are just going to cut it out once. You're going to cut out and leave a quarter inch seam allowance. So just start cutting in and that's what it's going to look like. Throw those away. Now we're going to clip around the curved edges and just to so when we turn it inside out it will be a lot smoother there won't be a, you'll reduce the bulk in those corners. So wherever there's a curve we're going to just take a little notch out of that curve making sure not to cut into the seam line. Take your turning stick and go to the edge and to be able to start pushing it down I'm just going to with my thumb and fingers separate those layers and kind of pull them out so I can take my stick and just grab some of that end of the fabric there to get it started. And just push it up so you get to that opening, poke it out, grab the fabric, and pull it. Take your stick and poke it down inside. And we're just going to help poke those edges out. I like to, on this curved area, just take it and run it along the seam to help poke out, poke the, that curve out as well. Makes it a lot quicker when we're pressing it. Do the same thing on the other end. Alrighty, now we're ready for the final pressing. So just a little tip on how to get the edges out. Instead of having to sit there and rub your fabric together and get those edges right out to the edge of the seam, it helps to just take a spritz of steam over the area that you're working. And then you can grab it a little easier. And then you can press it. Of course, use your steam setting Make sure you're not burning yourself. Shot of steam above the fabric and then just grab it with your fingers. Just 
So when you get to that area that we left open, just simply fold that the edges down a quarter of an inch. Pull it so it's straight. All right. Now, just to finish off that opening that we have to stitch that closed, you can obviously do that by hand, or I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and top stitch that closed. Find your opening and just start here and end here, back stitching at the beginning and the end of your seam. Right close to the edge. There you have it. A custom, unique, stylish bow tie ready to throw around your neck and tie a cute bow tie. Look at the endless options for fabric. This one I have used two colors, different colors of fabric, just to add a little bit of contrast. So many fun things you can do. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel. Stay tuned for upcoming classes and tutorials. We'll see you next time. Bye.